I just wanted to leave you with sort of like five points that really are going to be the things that I'd like you to take away. Um, you'll see that the European tech market is quite fragmented and that's really important to understand because it's not news to European vendors. If anything, some of us have erred on the, on the other extreme and cultivated new opportunities in our own, our own home countries and uh, only then do we push into a neighbourhood or two rather than actually go for somewhere new where nobody else is, find that new market and be that remarkable distributor or vendor in that, in that field. But whether you're a European based vendor, an American vendor or an Asian vendor, it's critical to understand the differences between the various European countries and to develop sales and marketing strategies based on those differences. For European vendors, that may mean looking beyond their home market at some of the faster growing opportunities in the Nordics or Central Europe. For US vendors, it may mean ignoring the headlines about debt crisis in Greece, Ireland and Portugal and pursuing the growth opportunities that do exist, especially when the weaker US dollar multiplies European revenues in US earnings reports. So here are the five things that tech vendor strategists need to do in European markets for this year and beyond. You need to develop at least eight different European strategies. If you think about it, you'll have lots of different people using tech adoption and the growth outlooks, but the language and the cultural differences and geographic separation still mean separate though similar strategies for each group of companies. And separate but similar strategies are also appropriate for Italy and <coughs> Spain, given their similar growth prospects, economic challenges and levels of tech adoption. And lastly, a vendor needs to decide whether and how to participate in Greece, Ireland and Portugal, even if the answer is no. Target the Tech 12 markets in Europe for next generation technology. Forrester identified 12 countries in the world where their spend on, uh, on technology was far higher based on their GDP. And six of those were in Europe. And some of those included Sweden, Switzerland and Denmark, whose actual spend versus their GDP was either equal or higher to the US. So it's really interesting to understand that not the obvious ones are actually the ones excelling and to understand why that is, how that is and where that's come from. Focus on Germany, France and Central Europe for uh, software apps. France tends to be somewhere where they're, they're high on software and low on hardware, um, which will be interesting if you're going in for vendor strategies where you know, if there's a vendor already in that you can complement and strategically align with, maybe there's an opportunity to piggyback on what already exists. Look out for continental Europe for IT outsourcing opportunities. This recession has caused people to be a bit reluctant to spend, which is a great opportunity for IT outsourcing. So you may as well um, see the silver lining in some of these situations. And offer um, different IT consulting services based on underlying software adoption. And what I mean by that is that if you're going in for software, go to France. But if you're looking for software when, where the hardware spend is a lot higher, the job's going to be a lot trickier. So again, if nobody's gone and into Germany with your product or that type of product and they're not necessarily going to be quick to adopt, you have to think about where that money's going to come from, how much money you have to invest in generating marketing and then move forward with that. So that was a brief, very brief, potted view on that and uh, without stealing Adam's thunder, um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for listening to my part and that the rest of us are going to sit here and run a panel now. And I leave it to you, Adam, to do the to the welcoming. Thank you very much for listening.